Well, hello YouTube. Um, here again, and this time I'm going to show you how to make a really simple signature for um, forms. First off, you need to make a new image, and you need its width to be 420 and its height 150. Okay, now grow it out a little bit to make it easier to work with. Now that you got that the way you want it. Go to your renders, whichever one you want to use. I think I'm going to use the one at the end right there. Yeah, that one looks good. So I'll use this one for the signature. Well, if I can ever get to the image right, sorry for this. Big inconvenience. Alright, now just drag and drop. Now you want to take and get an area of the signature that has a lot of detail kind of what you want it to look like. I can't really describe what well, I mean. You just want an area that has a lot of the details and colors in it, but not too much that it will really distort the picture. Now you want to go to filter, um, noise, and then pick. Now you want to turn them just up a little bit on one, and you just play with it until it gets looking a little pixelized, like You'll soon see. Sorry for this look being really slow. I'm running on all my crappy gear that I'm hoping to get renewed soon. Yeah, it'll be done in, I don't know, two or three hours. You want it to look something like this. You may want to gauge and blur it. If that's how it's pronounced, that makes it a little less pixelized and it makes the image run smoother on some images. Okay. Now you want to take the same image and drop it again. This time you want to shrink it down to the size that you want to use for your signature. And remember to lock your um, chain up there, that way it doesn't throw the picture out of balance. Now on this one here, you definitely want to take and delete all the writing on the signature that you don't need. Just take your delete um, button and take it, rub it out. A little bit more shrinking will make it better. That should just about do it. Now you want to move it just a little off center. Now you want to take and duplicate that layer, and on the top layer. You want to go to filter, um, distort, not warp, and you want to swirl, um, either one of the swirls with it, but you want to just swirl the image quite well. You don't really want to be able to tell that it's the image, but you want the colors to still remain in the image. Now after you're done with that, just real quickly do that. Now you want to take your move tool and you want to move it to your side. Now this here will help blend the colors and remove some of it. Now you want to just find one that looks good. Sometimes overlay, sometimes burn even looks good. But um, that one right there looks pretty good to me today. Now you want to drop it below that one layer. But I guess it would help if I did it on this right here, right? Now you want to take and go to sharpen. Well, you want to select the layer that you're using first, I guess, too. That makes it less pixelized on the um, sides and makes the image run more clear. Now, you want to take and duplicate that layer one more time. This time, you want to take and go to Motion Blur. Now, you want to just change the um, 
blur to move in one direction that kind of does not go with the image at all. I can't really describe but what this does. It darkens your image and makes it look more, I don't know, clear and it just turns out to be a better image. Again, with the slowness of my computer. And oh yeah, if you haven't noticed, I'm using Windows Movie Maker, so I cannot record my sound with Snagit. So I'm having to go into Windows Movie Maker and narrate this at different times. So that's the reason I kind of I can't really see exactly what I did. So I'm sorry about that. But anyways, now you go overlay and you just turn down the opacity a little bit and get something that looks pretty good. Now, go to the bottom layer and you want to turn down the opacity and it make it blend in with the colors of the thing. Now, like I said earlier, you want to maybe take your background and gauge and blur it to make the image more clear. And Sometimes it looks better the other way, but on this one right here, I'll have to gauge and blur it to make it look better. Because I'm going to do an overlay kind of type effect on it. Now you just want to take and drop a render on it. You won't have two renders, maybe even more, sometimes even less, but two renders should do this image. And you want to take, put that above everything else. You want to do an alpha channel, then go to the erase tool, um, eraser tool, and you want to erase what you don't want. And preferably you want to use a fuzzy brush, but right now I'm just going to do a real quick one over this right here. Then I'm going to go with my fuzzy brush, which will take in. And it saves a little time sometimes because the fuzzy brush sometimes messes up. Oh crap, I just screwed something up. I can tell already. I can always redo that. Now all I want was that part of the render anyways. Alright, drop your second one here. See, that's what happens if you don't do an alpha channel. And you just want to get it looking good. Well, I think I'm going to put some more blue in there. If I remember right. Yep. Just get something kind of blurred off the image a little bit and make it look okay. Now just take your text tool. Type in your text what you want. And put go on 13C6 like always. Let me fix that real quick. There we go. Change my color text to white. And drag it randomly somewhere. I'm going to turn down the opacity and the font size and all that. Make it more compact and less visible, but you can still see it. I mean, it, when you're doing a real more fancier sig, you want to use the text that looks good and everything. But this here is just a quick tutorial, so I'm not going to make everything look pretty. I'll just drag it some random area and I'll turn down the opacity level. Now this makes the text actually go better with the signature and it doesn't really stand out as much but it still has its presence. Now you want to go save as, you want to name it wherever you want, and then you want to name it as a JPEG, JPG. 